The Adventures of Tintin by Hergé. Dramatized by Simon Eastwood. Three, Red Rackham's Treasure. To the editor from Tintin, famous boy reporter. Subject, treasure hunt. On a secret voyage in search of treasure, I set off with Snowy and my trusty friend, Captain Haddock. But the sea would not be our only enemy. And before embarking, we would have to deal not only with a mad professor, but also the greed of others. Thunder and typhoon, <laughs> billions of blue blistering barnacles. They're all alike, these journalists. Look here, Tintin. Read this. The forthcoming voyage of the trawler Sirius is arousing speculation in seafaring circles. Uh. Despite the close secrecy which is being maintained, our correspondent understands that the object of the voyage is nothing less than the search for the horde of the pirate Red Rackham. Uh, <laughs> see? Tintin, the famous reporter whose sensational intervention... Oh. In the bird case, recently made headline news, and his friend, Captain Haddock, have discovered the exact resting place of the unicorn sunk at the end of the 17th century by Sir Francis Haddock. Journalists, they're always the same. We could have done without this publicity. You're right, Captain. Uh, they could have at least mentioned my name. There's no telling the sort of damage this could do. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm Red Rack and Soul Assembly. And here's my family tree. Ah, leave this to me. So, you're all descendants of Red Rackham, are you? Good. Well, I'm a descendant of Sir Francis Haddock, who blew up Red Rackham and his pirates to smithereens. And there are times, blistering barnacles, when my ancestors fighting blood against the boys. Come on, you freshwater pirates. Fancy this people, this jelly deal. Bashi Bazoot! She was! There you are. That's got rid of that gang of thieves. <laughs> well done, Captain. <laughs> oh, not another. I'd like to speak to Mr. Tintin. Why? No doubt your name happens to be Red Rackham. Yes? No, I'm asking if you're called Red Rackham. Oh! What's your name? Please, uh, speak a little louder. I'm a little hard of hearing. Your name? You hear what I say? I've oh, gone away. What a pity. Well, never mind. I'll come again. I, uh, I particularly wanted to speak to Mr. Tintin in his home himself. I'm Tintin. What do you want? Ah! Mr. Tintin, they told me you were away. I'm delighted to meet you. My name is Calculus Cuthbert Calculus. Oh? No, Calculus Cuthbert Calculus. Mr. Tintin, I understand you are sitting off on a search for treasure. That's nice, but have you considered the sharks? The sharks? No, young man, I'm talking about the sharks. I expect you intend to do some diving, in which case beware of sharks. Uh, but I... Don't you agree? I've invented a machine for underwater exploration, and it's shark-proof. If you'll come to my house with me, I'll show it to you. I'm very sorry, but... No, it's not far. Less than ten minutes. I I'm afraid I'm very busy. Well, and of course, I... certainly your friend can come too. It's no good. There's no... There's no time! That's fine. Well, good. That's settled. We'll leave at once. I'm so glad you agreed to come. It's in here. Oh, it's certainly an impressive room. You can tell he's an inventor. You can tell he's got a screw loose. No, no. It's just over here, suspended from the ceiling. Why doesn't he invent a hearing aid? As you can see for yourselves, it's a kind of small submarine. It is powered by an electric motor and has oxygen supplies for half an hour's diving. Amazing. It's exactly the same shape as a shark. On the contrary, you climb into it... <laughs> like this. <laughs> I can't understand it. It's sabotage. Someone has sabotaged my machine. It seems the prof isn't the only one with a screw loose. <laughs> it's broken in half. <laughs> We're extremely sorry, Professor Calculus. Extremely sorry, but your machine will not do. For two, you'd like a two-seater. No, Professor Calculus. I said your machine will not do for us. Oh, good. Well, gentlemen, that's agreed. I'll make another smaller one. It will be ready in uh, eight days' time. At last, we're on our way, Snowy. And in under eight days. Perhaps we should celebrate escaping the mad professor with some of Captain Haddock's whiskey. And now we're searching for the sign of the Eagle's Cross. Ah, oh, Tintin! Look here. Uh, just received a radio message. Port Commander to Captain Sirius. Reduce speed. Motorboat coming out to meet you? What can this mean? Oh, look! Here it comes! Ah, uh, let's have the binoculars. Uh, can't quite see the passenger, then better not be Professor Calculus. <laughs> we 
We certainly gave him the slip. Thompson and Thompson? What are you here for? Hello! Hello. We are coming with you. Coming with us? Blistering barnacles! We might as well have brought the professor. Thank you, Captain, <laughs> but we're not here for scientific purposes. Be precise. We are here to protect you. Oh, I feel much safer now. Protect us? Is someone threatening us? You are in great danger. Max Burr, the evil antique stealer, managed to give two policemen the slip when he was being taken for questioning. Two policemen, eh? Not called Thompson and Thompson by any chance? Great snakes. And after all we did to put him behind bars. And last night, he was seen skulking near the Sirius. He may try to take his revenge. Just let him try and he'll run himself up against a haddock. Uh, maybe. But anyway, now we are aboard, you'll be able to feel that you're perfectly safe. There'll be no fishy going on. To be precise, there'll be no uh, well, it's been a long day, Captain. Good night. Good night. Snowy! Now, where did I put my key? Crumbs, it's the two detectives. What's going on here? It's him, it's him, it's him. He's it's stolen my bed. Not true. It's him. He's taken one of my blankets. Aren't you ashamed at your age, quarrelling over such trifles? Now, that's all over, isn't it? Yes, yes, it is. That's better. Good night. Now to bed. Something's odd, though. It's a blistering blue blasted barnacles. What's the matter, Captain? The matter? Blistering barnacles. My bottle of whiskey vanished. Vanished? Someone must be worried about your health. Oh, ha, ha. You can laugh, but if I catch the crookies in for a rough time... Oh, we'll investigate it in the morning. Now let's go to bed. I'm dead tired. Good night. Oh, it doesn't make sense. Blankets. Whiskey. Something's definitely not right. Help! Help! It's him! Take it! Come quickly! We've got a moment to lose! What's the matter? Oh, Lord! Thundering bombs! There's a typhoon in the hole! I mean, the bomb-basting barnacles and blisters about to explode! No! No! Bomb! 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 There's a bomb in the hole! Here we are. I went to open this case of whiskey. There was a bomb there instead. Easy does it. Be careful. No, don't open it. I must. We've got to get to the bottom of this. Well, well. I can't tell. Oh, don't touch it. I have no choice, Captain. Our Father, who art in heaven. Ah! This is just steel casing and steel plates. Steel casing? Well, you're right, by thunder. It's not a bomb after all. Definitely not. Look, we'll open another case. Blistering barnacles, more steel casing. And in this one? Steaming blood, all my crates. There's not a drop of whiskey aboard. If I catch the monster who played this trick on us, I'll have his liver for breakfast. <laughs> Hello, boys. <laughs> oh, Tim Tim, Snowy's all over the place. <laughs> oh, you missed a wonderful party. Great <laughs> snakes. He, he, why, he's drunk. Snowy, what have you done? My whiskey and a dog. <laughs> Give us a kiss. He can't have drunk it all. Foo, your breath stinks. Now, come on. Show us where you found the bottle. Yeah, all right. You want a drink as well? <laughs> must have been smashed near that lifeboat. Let's investigate. If I ever catch the culprit... What's the problem, boys? Listen. Someone's asleep in the lifeboat. Impossible. The lashings are secure. At, at least blistering barnacles are lashings are free on this side. There is someone in it. Thundering typhoons! Get up, you... you, you, you. <laughs> Professor Calculus? Good old cup. <laughs> my whiskey, you wretch! What have you done with my whiskey? For whiskey? Certainly not at my age, but I must confess I did sleep rather badly. I do hope you'll give me a cabin. 
cabin. I'll give you a cabin. I'm going to stow you with the bottom of the hold for the rest of the voyage on dry bread and water. My whiskey! Where's my whiskey? It's on board, of course. It's on board. It's, uh, it's on board. <laughs> Heaven be praised. Naturally, it's in separate pieces. Separate pieces? My whiskey in separate pieces! Of course, it is a little smaller than the first one, but nevertheless, it was too big to pass unnoticed, so I had to dismantle it and pack all the parts in the cases. Dismantle it? What about the whiskey out of the cases? Tell me, is it still ashore? That's right, the night before. You see, the cases were still on the quay, ready to be embarked. I took out all the bottles they contained and put the pieces of my machine in their place. Oh, you wretch! Ignoramus, abominable snowman! I'll throw you overboard! 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 Thank you, you hear me? Captain, thank you very much. Oh, it is just what I expected from you. Such a kind welcome. You'll see. You won't regret it. A month at sea, 31 long, drinkless days, and finally we've reached the position indicated on the parchments. We should see soon the island where the unicorn sank. Isn't the island marked on any charts? No, no, it's too small. Come up on deck. We'll try and spot it. I can't see anything yet, can you? Nothing. Crikey! Yeah. Look at the Thompson sailor suits. I didn't know there was a pantomime on the island. Good morning, Good morning. Captain. Can you see anything? No, uh, not yet. But there's a bottle of champagne for the first one to sight land. Now. What's the name of the island? Oh, how should I know? It's not marked on any of the charts. But you're sure we're near it. Positive. I plotted the position yesterday at noon. But I suppose you made a mistake in your calculations. <laughs> I made a mistake in my calculations, did I? All right, they're on the table in my cabin. Go and check them if you want. Tell me, Captain, was there a fish jumping out of the water just now? No, it was a grand piano. I, I, I didn't think it could have been a fish. You must forgive me, Captain, but there really is a little mistake in your calculations. Oh, Look, yeah. this is where we are exactly. Oh, yes, you're right. I have made a mistake. Gentlemen, please take off your hats. But well, why must we take well, off our hats? Why must we take off our hats, Captain? To pray, of course. Why? Wow. Is it Sunday already? No, gentlemen, because according to your calculations, we are now standing in the middle of Westminster Abbey. And there it is, at last! A treasure island! It's magnificent! A bottle of champagne for that man! So when we get back, too late to go ashore this evening. We'll drop anchor and... Tomorrow we'll explore the island. In! Uh, out! Uh, In! Uh, out! <laughs> That's it, gentlemen. He's taken to rowing like a fish to water. I didn't think this is part of the detective job. <laughs> to be precise. Nor uh, did I. I wonder if the island's inhabited. I wonder In. if there are any nice juicy bones. Out! Uh. Well, here we are. So you can stop uh, rowing now, just when you're halfway up the beach. Well, I'm off to reconnoitre. Whereabouts is that? <laughs> Snowy, go and look for some bones. Right, off we go. Tintin, look over here. What have you found, Captain? The remains of the jolly boat. Do you remember the one Sir Francis Haddock came ashore in? This certainly proves we're near our goal. Red Rackham's treasure is out there, somewhere at the bottom of the sea. Now then, let's see if the island holds any other clues for us. It's a kind of mini jungle. Imagine living here for two years. We must keep our eyes peeled. We must peel our eyes. Look there! My word! An idol! Yes, an idol, but it's incredible. The pipe, the bottle of rum, uh, it's meant to be Sir Francis Haddock. Yeah. And look at that mouth. His voice must have made an enormous impression on the natives. I can just imagine their faces the first time they heard him shout, Ration my rum! <laughs> Who shouted like that? What? Wasn't it you? No, it wasn't me. Thundering typhoons! Oh. Thundering typhoons! 
Oh, it can't be Sir Francis. How do you... This island is haunted, Captain. Let's get through that Pac-Man! Pac-Mark yourself, you gibbering ghost! Up there, Captain, look, parrots! Blistering barnacles, parrots! Yes, parrots. From generation to generation, your ancestors' vocabulary has been handed down. Thundering typhoon! Where are you, troglodyte? Cannibal! Cannibal! Ah, copycat! Blistering barnacles! Oh, shut up! Well, at least we know the island is uninhabited. Find any bones on the beach, Snowy? Oh, only the odd skull and a couple of wooden legs. And we've got ourselves rather a nice idol at that. We are not allowed to be idle, to be precise. What? Come on, come on, get your backs into it. Oh, what pleasant visions haunt me as I gaze upon the sea. The old romantic legends, all my dreams come back to me. Look out, the shark! Thundering typhoon! It almost turned my hand off. Look, look, there's another! And there! And there! And there! And there! I know, Captain. I'm beginning to think Professor Calculus's machine may come in handy after all. You made up your mind, then? Yes, the Professor has explained exactly how this machine works. It'll be all right, Snowy. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you, your oxygen supply will last for half an hour. When you locate the wreck, press the little red button on the left of the instrument panel. That releases a small canister underneath the machine. It gives off thick smoke when it comes into contact with water. That will show us where the wreck lies. A little red button. Right! No, no, not white. Red. A little red button. Have you got it? Here we go, then. Good, well, goodbye, and good luck. Yes, good luck. Down we go. I'd rather be going up. Oh, this is fun, eh, Snowy? Uh, no. There's the bottom. Golly, what a lot of water. Hello? What's the matter? The engine stopped. We aren't moving anymore. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. It looks as if our propeller is entangled in the weeds. Oh, I never was good at pretending. We'll try and free ourselves by going into reverse. Oh, it's no good. The propeller is completely jammed. And the engine stalled. Well, Snowy, my boy. How do we get out of this one? Look! Look! Smoke! He's found the wreck of the unicorn! There, Professor Calculus! Look! Smoke! It was sight! He's found the wreck! Oh! Captain, look there! Look! He's found the wreck! Patience, Snowy. It won't be long before someone rescues us. I say, Professor, you're an excellent oarsman. No, 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 it's an underwater viewing instrument. Just keep looking through it and you'll see the wreck. Yeah, why hasn't Tintin come up? Yeah, well, that's as may be, but I was a great sportsman in my youth. Oh, God. Thunder and typhoons have dropped the wreck, it's Tintin. Oh, wonderful. Quick, quick, let me look. Oh, Columbus, the propeller is fouled by weeds. How can we save him? Really, Captain, your eyes have deceived you. It's not the wreck, it is Tintin. Oh, he can't no. resurface. What can we do? Oh, yes, perhaps we could, but Tintin's only got five minutes of oxygen left. Oh, by no. the time we got a diver equipped and ready, Tintin would be dead. Dead? I've got an idea. Take the anchor used for mooring the boy. Uh, what, the anchor? What is? Yes, that's right. What yes. for? Well, that's quite right. We'll try and hook it onto the submarine, then you we'll pull on the rope until the weeds break. Hurry. It's getting more and more difficult to breathe. Come on. And I don't want to end up as fish food. An anchor. They're going to hook us. Oh, quick. Empty the ballast tanks. That'll help them. He 
Oh, good. Good. Next to the left, Captain. Yes. Yes, yes. Good, good now. Pull. Pull. Pull for goodness sake. Pull. Ah, Father and Type, hold on. Try to what do you think I'm doing? Play the cornet. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes, this is no time to be taking a swim. Blistering barnacle. I can see her. She's coming up. Right. Yes. If it wasn't for you and the professor, I wouldn't be alive now, Captain. All in a day's work, didn't it? Ah, oh, but it did work, Captain, and here's the proof. You see, it's just as I said, weeds. Oh, really? I thought they were weeds. Weeds or no weeds, I don't set foot in that thing again. Fine, get it ready. Snowy and I are setting out again immediately. Oh! We're sure to find the unicorn this time, Snowy. I'm very pleased for you. Let's hope he doesn't run into any more trouble. I, um, Captain Maver, I have bad news for you. Oh, bad news for me, eh? No bad news for you. Very bad. I'm afraid the unicorn is not here. Look. What's that gadget? Yes, you're quite right. It's a mechanical pendulum. I've taken up the study of divining, and I've arrived at the conclusion I just gave you. Yeah, all from that What's it you jest? Yes, yes, much further west. You'll see, my pendulum will begin swinging from east to west. Oh, look, no. look, it started. You'll see, it's, it's swinging westwards. The unicorn's treasure will be found in that direction. Over there. You daft old fool, look! Caution! Steer due east! Captain Smook! There's the submarine surfacing! Oh, this time we've got it! Hurrah! How about this then? A casket! A casket! Oh, Red Rackham's treasure! Red Rackham's treasure! Here it is! Oh. It's not easy to open it. It's all rusted up. It's probably the rust. Ah, got it. <laughs> billions of billions of blue blistering barnacles. What is it? A thundering typhoon. It's not the treasure. These are all documents. Half eaten away by damp. What are these, then? Documents. Fine. What am I supposed to do with documents? Can I drink them? Come now, Captain. Don't lose heart. We'll continue our search. Oh, what's the use? That's it. I've got it. These are old documents. And so for three weeks we searched night and day, and still Red Rackham's treasure eluded us. Perhaps the Professor's pendulum had been telling the truth. Could it have been that Sir Francis had taken the treasure with him when he left the island? We would never know. In a month, we arrive home. Two days later, sitting in my apartment... Good morning, Tintin. Ah, oh, it's Mr. Supersonic Heary. Hello, Professor. What brings you here? Very well, thank you. And you? I've come to bring you the documents. The documents? What documents? No, the documents we found in the casket. Don't you remember? Oh, here, look. For the remainder of the voyage home, I tried to piece them together, sticking the fragments on sheets of paper. Some are illegible. Others, like this one, are comparatively easier to decipher. I believe this one will interest the captain particularly. Charles II, by ye grace of God, King of England, desiring to reward our trusty and beloved knight, Sir Francis Haddock. For his devoted service, hereby grant and bestow our royal manor of Marlin Spike Hall. Thunder and typhoon to my dreaming, it's Marlin Spike Hall. Marlin Spike, where Max Bird did my family estate. Oh, it's fantastic. And what's more, as the Bird Brothers have a new home at His Majesty's pleasure, the estate must be up for sale. Captain, you must buy it back. Uh, 
Bard back, yes. With what? Hey ho! If only we'd found the treasure! Oh, that's true, we need some money. Captain, look, you see, it says Marlin Spike Hall is your new ancestral home. Oh, Mr. Lightning Brain, no money, you hear? No treasure, no money! Funny? What's so funny? Oh, funny. Money! Go, cash, Mazuma, you deaf old goat! I heard that, Haddock. It's quite unworthy of you. Yes, money. The government have paid me a large sum from the patent of my submarine. Thanks to you, I was able to try it out. So I thought I'd buy you your new home. If only you'd listen properly. What? All's well that ends well. You haven't found the treasure, but you've got back your family estate. Oh, it's my... I hope it's going to be big enough for you, Captain. <laughs> I must say I'm glad you've decided to keep Nestor on here as butler, even if he did work for the Bird Brothers. Oh, well, he's part of the furniture. Oh, what a wonderful house it is. Hey, what about these famous cellars you talked of? Where are they? Come with me. I'll take you there. Thundering typhoon! What a lot of junk! Oh, yes. The Bird Brothers use this as a storeroom. Look, that's St. John the Evangelist. We must be in an old chapel. Uh, what do you think of it? Oh, incredible. Spooky. Wait, it's queer. I wonder. What? What? Hooray! The Eagle's Cross. And then shines forth the Eagle's Cross. There it is. The Eagle's Cross. Where? 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 I can see a cross, but where's the Eagle? There, in front of you. Yes, there, the statue of St. John the Evangelist, who's always depicted with an eagle of Patmos after the island where he wrote his revelations. Oh, smart, Alec. Now, let's move this. There's a globe of the world at his feet. And an eagle. You're right. And look, there's a mark on the globe just where the island is. Oh, great snakes. When I push it with my finger, the island moves. So, Sir Francis had a did take the treasure with him when he left the unicorn. And to think we were looking for it halfway across the world when all the time it was lying here right under our very noses. Oh, but don't bow. Well, what do you say now, my friends? All's well that ends well, eh? I always knew it'd all turn out for the best. Just as I always said, more to the worst. Yes, 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 but I said all's well that ends well, don't you agree? Your maritime gallery, I think it's very successful. As for the figurehead of the unicorn, quite remarkable. The tourists seem to like it. Yes, thanks, but I was saying that our adventures had a happy ending. They ended, and happily. No, thank you, never between meals. Oh, no, he's at it again. Blistering particles, all's well that ends well. All's well that ends well. Without any doubt, but this is just the moment to quote that old saying, all's well that ends well. Oh. <sighs>